Waste. The things we discard because we no longer have use for. There are many types of waste, but for the purpose of this video, let's stick to what is termed as municipal solid waste, or what the WHO refers to as any type of trash, refuse, or discarded material like plastic, metal, glass, paper, organic waste, rubber, leather, wood, and others. The planet produces about 2.01 billion tons of municipal solid waste every year. Imagine this, 3,825 tons of municipal waste are produced and collected every 60 seconds. How much is that? The world's largest landfill site, known as the Apex Regional Landfill in Las Vegas, USA, is about 2,200 acres the equivalent of 1,250 football pitches. And that is just one of many landfill sites on the globe. Africa generates about 180 million tons of municipal solid waste every year. Due to the growth rate of waste being generated, this number is projected to triple by 2050. Out of the waste produced, 57% are organic waste, 13% plastic, 4% glass, 4% metal, 9% paper, and 13 for the others. A whopping 90% or more of these staggering numbers are disposed in uncontrolled dump sites and often burned openly. This increases our risk of diseases, flooding, and environmental pollution. Approximately 70 to 80% of the waste generated in Africa is recyclable. However, only as low as 4% is being recycled. In our very first episode of How Things Are Made, we take a look at how glass plays a role in Ghana's economic and sociocultural environment through the handiworks of a glass blower, a bead manufacturer, and a bead accessories and jewelry maker. Our journey begins at Manya Krobo at Mr. Tete's factory. He is currently the only trained glass blower in Ghana and possibly West Africa as far as he knows. He shows us what it's like to work with waste recycled glass. I was a professional bead maker. I make beads in the city bead industry. At the end of my apprenticeship, I have a scholarship to go to Netherlands to go and learn more glass about blowing. And it's like there's a difference between their glass and our glass. So we our glass, we are using recycle. They are using raw material from silica, soda, and sand. They make it clear. But we are using recycled bottles, uh, Coca-Cola, Fanta, Fanta, kind of magnesia, newer glasses, and even television screens. And we are using glass bottles here in Ghana because we import glasses bottles from Europe, from Asia, from let's say China. But our people here in Ghana, in, in Krobo, are the big makers and uh, we are not able to consume the glass that come in Ghana. So I have in mind that I will build a glass studio, a glass uh, factory, that we can be able to make glass in large quantity. And I can also employ more people, I will train them, and then we can have a number of staff that can, we can consume the glass. Mr. Tete's influence extends far beyond the walls of this bustling workshop. He has taught many people the art of glass blowing, including his beloved wife, Skillfully adept at the craft, stands beside him, contributing her talents to the factory. Together, they breathe life into glass, each piece telling a unique story of dedication and creativity. The glass that I'm, I'm doing, uh, people buy from me, and I also sell it in Accra. I do small, small export in Germany and US, UK and Togo, and also Abidjan. 
So if you are a bead maker or you are a glass maker, you need to do compatible sorting. So you know how grain is working. So these all materials are different, different layout. So you need to check out your capacity and know the combination of that do glasses, then break them according to that. So what they use in Germany is very soft, here it's very hard. For me to make a glass jack or, or a vase, yes, first of all, I myself sometimes visitors and uh, tourists come, they come here. When they come, they bring me the glasses and then I'll, I'll do the sorting. So normally I use the premium Belago bottle because it's very soft and it can give me clear glass that I can be able to use it for my designing or as a raw material. When we buy the material like the Belago bottle, we bring it here in our factory we wash it, we smash it, we dry it, and then if the furnace is ready for uh, loading, we load it and then we heat it, and then we are using uh, pipes to blow, to shape it, to jack it, to point it, to open it, and then you have your vase or you have your jar. What does Africa stand to gain by properly managing waste? According to the African Union's Agenda 2063, Goal 7, Africa aspires to build environmentally sustainable and climate-resilient economies within its communities. In practice, if Africa diverted waste away from dump sites and landfills towards reuse, recycling, and recovery, we could inject an additional 8 billion US dollars every year into the African economy and create significant socio-economic opportunities like better road networks, hospitals, schools, and social amenities that are very affordable for the general population on the continent. Our next stop is the city bead industry at Odumase, one of the biggest traditional bead manufacturing organizations in Ghana with decades of experience in making different kinds of beads. For the purpose of our video, we will learn how transparent glass beads are made. I started doing beads when I was infant, and by then I was eight years. When you talk of beads, it has a very long history, and my both parents were bead makers. You know, when we closed from school, we used to help them. They would send you go for firewood, washing of bottles, smashing of bottles, and we are all in need. And me too, I'm also doing, and I'm in need up to now. So I'm a bead maker in Ghana here. I would like to talk about how we go about doing of beads in Ghana. First of all, we have the glass transparent beads. Those ones, we use empty bottles like Coca-Cola, beer bottles, Guinness bottles, any bottles at all is good for us. Our bottles, normally we get from embassies, at times from beer bars, and we have some people also who supply at the shop or at where the factory is, and then we pay them an amount. And we also we have a market where they have been selling the bottles over there. So we go there, if you are in need of bottles, we go there and then we buy it and then we come back. Solid waste management, especially in urban areas like Accra, vary from neighborhood to neighborhood. According to a survey carried out in 2017, indiscriminate dumping was rather generally low. However, even with about 66% of solid waste being properly collected, the management of landfill sites is another issue altogether. We just wash it nicely, we smash it with a stone, and we get a chunk. We have a sieve. 
after we save it we take the ducts out because we are working on transparent we have to get it very clear so that there shouldn't be any ducts inside so we just take the ducts out and then we get the fine chunks After that, we have our molds. The molds, we put it in the kaolin. It's a white chalk, like a clay. We mix it with water. After we put it on the table, just a five minutes for it to dry. Then we fill the mold with our hands. After filling the mold, then we send it to the fire. But the glass, it takes like 40, 30 to 45 minutes. And it is 800 to 1000 degrees Celsius before it melts. After it melts, we use a spatula to bring it out. We have a two pins. We use the left one to place it, the right one to pierce the hole at the center of the bead. We roll it nicely to form it very round. We have so many shapes, we have claws, square, anything at all. How the mold will determine the shape of the bead. So after we put it down for cooling, that is the annealing. for one hour, to be on the floor for one hour. After it cools, we remove it nicely. We have a special stone for polishing. We we'll go there, then we use water and sand only. We rub it on the stone with our two hands. After, then you just pour water on it, we wash it, we put it on the table for stringing. After we string it, then we polish it. and then it's ready for the market. But it just doesn't end there. The value chain continues with Barbara, a beads jeweler and accessories maker who explains the cultural significance of beads for the different categories of customers she has. Beads communicate to people. That's why the foreigners love to wear the typically handmade glass beads, which are made from the glass. Some are meant for men and some are meant for women. For instance, if you are giving a gift out to a woman, you definitely go for soft colors like peach, baby blue, and white. But talk of men, you know men, even for yourself, you go for black or navy green. So it speaks to the softness of women and then the toughness of men. Angles are meant for men, and then anything round is meant for women. So even when the designs put on the beads, it's a form of communication. It speaks that women are soft, they are calm, and it speaks to who they are. And then with the men, they, they wear, for instance, in the prehistoric time, men will wear a lion's teeth to show how strong they are and who they represent in the community. If you go to the Ashanti Kingdom, a queen mother may wear something roundish and cute, but the chief or the man crowd himself will wear something huge because it's a symbolic thing to them. The jewelry in general, they communicate from the design to who is wearing it and then the color. And then the color again also depicts the occasion and what's going on. Black usually is meant for funerals. White and other vibrant 
palace are meant for victory, wedding, or childbirth. So in all, we don't just wear jewelry, but wearing six. We wear to communicate. From discarded glass to new treasures, we see a simple yet powerful transformation. It's not just about recycling, it's about recognizing potential in the overlooked. In our hands, waste takes on new value and the ordinary becomes something more. And something more is what we'll show you in our next episode of How Things Are Made. Mommy.